So guys, welcome back to a brand new PDCGO video. Today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at another Lycanroc Persian deck. And this time, this deck saw play in Denver, which kind of proves that this deck might actually have some back to it. I don't know. Um, it's a very interesting take on the Lycanroc Persian deck. There's a lot of other tech cards in here uh, that just kind of your straightforward Lycanroc Persian build. The deck did get 55th place by John Collins. So the deck somehow got some traction behind it, did good enough to get 55th place, which is pretty impressive uh, considering this is like one of the under the radar rogues. So um, yeah, before we get into this piece of video, guys, shout out to the sponsor card Kevin TCG. Of course, if you are ever looking for any PDCGO codes for any set for Team Up or Lost Thunder, you guys want to get ready for the rotation, get yourself some of the prison packs or something like that. Or if you want to get some pre-orders for Unbroken Bonds when they go live, Card Cover TCG does have them all. You pick up the Picarom, uh, Jolteon GX codes too. Um, and when you guys buy something from Card Cover TCG, of course, when you get something, you can use discount code code LDF, get yourself a 5% discount on your purchase. So shout out to Card Cover TCG. So we'll look into the deck. So like an Arc Persian is a very cool archetype. Uh, one of your main attackers is a Lolan Persian, which has an attack that needs no energy. Does empty threat, does 90 damage, does attack, does 30 less damage, times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active. So obviously everything needs energy to attack, but because we have Lycanroc with Twilight Eyes, it's very possible to get Persian to do 90 damage for free. Even the uh, Meowth is really good, Spoil the Fun can do 70 damage if you go second. This automatically can KO a, uh, an Inke, a Zorua, a Jirachi being a big one. And then we just combo with the double Lycanroc. Both Lycanrocs are really good at dealing with Picaram, of course. We got Bloodthirsty Eyes and Dangerous Rogue Lycanroc. And then we got the Twilight Eyes and a Cellrock Lycanroc, uh, which is pretty interesting. Now, the interesting thing about this deck is there's a lot of other cards in here that just are Lycanroc Persians. Uh, there's the Puzzle. Uh, obviously, Sledgehammer is really good. Uh, but one other interesting thing is going to be the 1 1 Weavile with Evil Admonition. Uh, pretty sure this is just in here because Evil Admonition can be used with unit energy and you can use Evil Admonition to take like a big one shot on something that has, you know, a deck with a lot of abilities in play, punish people from playing abilities, pretty good idea. And then you also have the Ditto, so you get like a 2-1 line and then you add in the Stretcher. Uh, the other interesting thing is all the cats we're playing. We're playing a different ver version of Persian. See what I did there? I rhymed. Uh, but we have this Persian with Make Him Pay, which does 20 damage. Your opponent has four more cards in their hand. They reveal their hand, discard any cards you find there until your opponent has exactly four. So this is great against not only Stall that tries to set up Unknown, but also with Zoark GX. Or really any deck in general, right? If they have like seven cards in their hand, even getting them to three cards that can be supporters can be devastating. Make Him Pay is actually a pretty good attack. Uh, it's kind of underrated right now not many people really look into it but we might as well play this Persian when we have the other Persian right you know so we got dual Persian pretty cool the Persian boys cats and dogs but uh make him pay can be really good against Stall and Zoar uh, and then of course there's Absol just really good against Jirachis then there's Marshadow let loose one tap with Lele so 21 Pokemon now we go into the items and everything uh we got one escape rope there's three nest balls in the deck interestingly enough uh, Josh decided to play two Pokemon Communication, uh, which is interesting to see alongside Ultra Ball. Rip my boy Ultra Ball, though. I can't believe Ultra Ball is not going to be in the standard format in like a couple of months. That's actually kind of insane that we actually are not going to have a format with Ultra Ball, a Gus supporter card, and a DC. I mean, that is kind of ridiculous. And I'm actually kind of excited, to be honest with you. This is a pretty fresh change for the format. Pretty sure Ultra Ball will eventually come back. Same with DC. Like, let's be honest here. Ultra Ball is one of the most iconic item cards ever. Um, not to mention, DCE is probably one of the most OG special energy cards. It'll probably come back. Uh, we got Switch in here. There's a Rest Fetcher. Two Brooklyn Hills is a stadium choice. Obviously, we need it for our fighting boys. Uh, one Ace Rolla, really nice. Uh, being able to loop like, Twilight Eyes with this and Bloodthirsty Eyes is really good. Four Cynthia, four Lily, uh, two Guzmas for supporters. Interestingly enough, there's two Professor Kiwis in here, uh, just to try and get that extra damage on the board. Uh, this does actually let Empty Threat one-shot a Zapdos, which is pretty relevant. Uh, there's two Choice Bands, four DCEs, obviously for all your attackers, four units, and only two Basic Fighting. 
personally, I do think maybe a third fighting is in order. I think three fight energies is probably better than two. Uh, but we got the unit energies to kind of back that up. I don't know. I just personally think this deck could use like at least three basic fighting energies, to be honest with you. But other than that, uh, this is a pretty interesting and solid list. Obviously, you don't need energy attack with Persian, so I guess that's the mindset there. I don't know. I still think maybe three fightings is good. Let's go do some games now with the updated Lycanroc Persian deck. And let's see how good it is. All right, guys, let's go do some games with the deck. As you can see, I do have some other decks to make videos on, but like, I don't know. I just don't really have the drive to record. I don't know. I, it's weird, but we're just in such like a dry point right now between sets that it's just kind of, I don't know. It's kind of boring. But uh looks like we're up against Pikaram. My best guess. It could be Zapdos too. Either Zapdos, Pikaram, I don't really care. I think we can beat both matchups. Alright, we do win the coin flip, which is really good. We'll see if we can get maybe a Donk with Spoil the Fun Meowth. There's a lot of Pokemon in this deck. We might not even start with a Meowth. Never mind, we do. Okay, we got a Meowth and a Rock Ruff start. Actually, it's a really good hand. Sharing we got the Lilies too, so that's nice. So, Spoil the Fun could definitely be spoiling the fun. If we're playing against a deck, though, that, like, like a Turbo Pika Rom deck, uh, Meowth doesn't really do much because it, or even a little Persian doesn't do much because they'll have like three energies on and then you're just doing zero damage with a little Persian, but still, it's pretty cool. So we'll see if it's gonna be a Zapdos deck. I'm a little worried that it is. It is not, I'm guessing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll attach. We'll Lily. Uh, there's Persian. Uh, we don't get the value out of Meowth, but we can still donk with Persian next turn, right? So it works out. Uh, we are going to put the Absol into play, I think. Force him to zero aura, and I'm just going to pass. So we actually have a pretty good start. Next turn, we don't even have to go Alolan Persian. Uh, we can actually, we, we can go Alolan Persian, knock out Jirachi. Or if he benches a couple more Pokemon here, we can Guzma up a Pikaram and knock it out with Dangerous Rogue, which is what I might go for if he is playing Pikaram. I feel like he is, because like he played down the Tapu Koko. You don't really play that down in Zapdos right away. You kind of wait to play that. So I'm assuming he's playing a, a Pikaram deck. I don't know. We'll see. It could be Zapdos if it is. Uh, Zapdos might be a little bit harder to deal with. Especially if they knock out my Lycanroc here. And my Rockruff, sorry. No, there's Guzma. I really hope he doesn't knock out my Rockruff. That could be very annoying. We don't have... Yeah, we don't have a direct Kikui Empty Threat Knockout to respond with, which is going to be unfortunate. But just a Cynthia. Alright, so we are safe here. Well, probably. We'll see if he's playing a uh, Pika Rom deck. He might Marshadow me, though. I mean, this is a very powerful hand. So we might get Marshadowed here. You never know. He might just Marshadow me. Try and give me a new hand to work with. It's funny though how good this little inversion is against stall cards. I mean, most stall decks don't really put that much energy. I'm just realizing now Empty Threat could actually be kind of hilarious against a stall deck because there's no way to remove energy. And it, all right, it is a Pika Rom deck. I was correct. Don't look like he's putting it into play though, which is a little unfortunate. But I mean, Pika Rom is one of your best matchups by far. Like, I think <coughs> Pika Rom and Zoark are like the two decks you want to see the most. Especially when you can like spoil the fun, take out the Zoroids. There's a Zapdos. Good thing he already did a support of the turn, so we can't goose by my rock rub, which is good. I might just take the dangerous Rokeo on the Zapdos, if I'm be honest with you. It might not be the most efficient knockout, but let's see. He can't retreat, he has to play a switch, which he does have. Alright, rip my Persian. Don't know what Persian ever did to you, you jerk. You big fat jerk. I think I just dangerous rogue him here. We can always like knock him out easily with like and rock anyways, it does not really matter. Bit of a jerk move, though, to KO my poor Alolan Meowth. Alright, well, Ultra Ball, get rid of Persian. Probably another Guzma to set up for another Lycanroc. What am I looking for here? I can get Diancy, because if I can get a DC, we can easily knock out Zapdos. I don't know, though. I might just get, um... Oh, we actually prized our Sneasel. And we prized our Ditto! Oh, wow. <laughs> that kind of sucks, actually. Um, yeah, I think we just get the Diancy. We'll get the Diancy, and if we can hit a DC here, we don't have to waste our GX attack. It doesn't really matter if I use it or not. I don't really care. Don't really care if we use it or not, but we'll see. And we don't have to use it. Alright, that actually makes me a little bit a little bit happier. 
We can just save it for when we actually need to use it. We'll take our prize. We get a Brooklyn Hill. That's really good. If he takes out my, uh, if he does like another Zapdos Guzma play on one of my Rock Rockruffs, uh, I can Brooklyn Hill and then I can do Sledgehammer here, which is pretty good. You can't retreat. Absol's in play. There's a Lily. So see if Lycanroc takes damage this turn. It's possible that it won't because, well, we got a lot of health. Okay, there's his own Absol coming down. That's fine. Not a big deal. We don't really rely on basics for treating other than, like, just rock rough and one retreat cost. Not really a big problem. If anything, he's filling up his bench for Dangerous Rogue, which is actually really good. So I'm fine with the Absol coming down. I don't know if he's even going to play a Picarom down. He probably just sees, like, oh yeah, Picarom. Probably not a good idea to put one into play at this point. And I don't know if he can win just off of the backing of Zapdos. He probably will go Coco here. He might knock me out with Coco in the coming turn, so I actually got to be kind of wary of that. I have to watch out for Tepu Coco GX. Well, all he really has is, like, Zapdos and Coco to, like, kind of deal with my Lycanroc. Like, he could probably use uh, Jolteon, but, like, Jolteon's weak to lightning, you can get one swift run in, it might not even KO me, and then I can just use Bloodthirsty Eyes or Guzma or Escape Rope to gust around the uh, swift run, and then it does not matter. So, yeah. I think Absol's making all the difference here. It might force him to like be like, well, I need a Zero Aura to retreat my Jirachi. So, he might have to play a Zero Aura down. There's a Stretcher. Does he have a switch here to attack me? If he does, we'll have to build up front of the Lycanroc. I kind of wish we had a uh, Ace Roller right now, too. That'd be pretty good. All right, we'll see what he does. Does he have a switch? I mean, I'm fine with just knocking him out anyways. If he doesn't even have an Electro Power, he's only doing 80 damage to me, and I'll still have 120 HP remaining, which is still quite a bit <laughs> when you're up against the Zapdos. 120 HP is actually a lot of HP to have. So we'll see if he has a switch or not. I might have an escape rope. I'd probably just bring an Absol, to be honest. No, he doesn't. So we're just going to take another free prize here, I guess. Which I'm fine with. Uh, we'll save the Broken Hill. We'll attach. Actually, we know he has a Guzman in his hand. But then he isn't dealing with the Lycanroc threat, so I don't really care. Uh, we'll choice ban the active, I guess. We'll, we'll Cynthia. Okay. Uh, nothing really good. Like an Ultra Ball for... Another Alolan Meow. I wouldn't mind getting Ditto or Sneasel, but we don't have them in the deck. I can stretch her here. Don't really want to. I'd rather save that. I think we'll just knock him out with Claw Slash. So we didn't get a Pokemon to uh, Pokemon Communication away. We'll see what we take off our prizes here. Kikui. No, we don't really need that right now. So we know he has Guzma, so he's most likely going to take out the Rockruff with the Unit Energy on it. But then he's still not dealing with my Lycanroc. And if I can just keep being careful with my energy, I don't have to walk into a Coco GX knockout. Which he might actually go for here, to be honest with you. If he does that, we'll Dangerous Rogue him. So I'm pretty glad that I was able to save the Dangerous Rogue now, thinking about it. Because if he does Coco me, we actually don't have a direct answer to Tapu Coco right away. So... I guess it's a good thing that we have Dangerous Rogue at our disposal still. So he's either going to knock out one of my Rockruffs. He could also try and knock out the Absol because it is causing him problems. And if he has enough tools, he could maybe take up the Diancy. Not that it matters. We have the Gakui. I don't really care about losing Diancy at this point. He's most likely going to target the Rock with the energy. But then that means like a Coco GX won't be as easy to get a KO with. He would need more cards to... Uh, Get a knockout so he may be kind of stuck right now might not have much i think he's gonna go for the guzma though i don't think he can even retreat he could retreat he could attach retreat no he's not going for guzma he's gonna go for an air hospitality maybe he is trying to go for a coco gx play then maybe he is going for coco yeah thunder mountain coming down good thing i saved the brooklet so yeah he might be going for coco here which is fine. We can still try and just knock him out with Dangerous Rogue, and then we pretty much win the game at that point. Alright, looks like he's going and got the Coco. Which I'm fine with. 
gonna be interesting to see how these lightning decks adapt without Tapu Koko GX. That is another big loss. Tapu Koko GX, not medium fighting decks, or lightning decks, is gonna be really interesting. I think lightning decks are gonna be a little bit, not worse, but a little bit more interesting. Lightning doesn't really lose too much outside of like Ultra Ball and... They still have Jirachi, Jolteon, Pikaram, Energy Switches. Uh, well, actually, did he use Multi Switch? There's a big loss. But we are gonna get knocked out here. I don't really care too much, though. We can knock him out with Dangerous Rogue in return, probably. We can Dangerous Rogue and bump the stadium all in one turn. That'd be amazing. I think I'm just gonna stretch it for the life and knock back. What? Do Yo, why didn't you knock me out? What? Oh my gosh. Well, then. Now that is a big mistake. Big, big, big mistake. Uh, we're just gonna get another. Uh, probably, probably get this. We'll get the Twilight Eyes like not. Um, doesn't matter if we play it or not, obviously. But I am gonna do that. Now my Rock Rep is safe, so now I'm guaranteed to have another back protector. I guess he can still potentially go Tapu Koko with Tapu Koko Prism Star, but I really don't know why he didn't just knock me out there. That just did not make much sense. Ooh, we got a Mark Shadow. We got a DCE. Don't really need to play that. I guess we'll play you down, just whatever. And we'll knock him out Danger Rogue. So we didn't get the Broken Hill, which is a little sad. That's fine though, we'll knock him out. He already used his stretcher though, right? Yeah, he might not have another one. So he might not be able to go Tapu Thunder. I really don't know why he didn't do Tapu Thunder there. That was such a weird misplay. Now we should definitely win the game for sure. Like, yeah. Why didn't he, I guess, he might have misclicked. On, fair enough on his end. That does happen. Misclicks can happen from time and time again. Alright, well that was game number one. Pikarom decks can try and beat you, but uh, you know what, as long as you have a good answer, it's not a big deal. Like, you can deal with Zapdos fairly easily as long as they don't get the early KOs on your Rock Quest with the energy on them, but you still have Alolan and Meowth and Persians to put in work too. Overall, like, you want to see Pikarom, you want to see Zoark, and yeah, Pikarom is a great matchup for that. Alright, we got some chests open up here. We'll open them up. See, we get, we got a Torkoal. Not even going to be good when Welder comes out, and that's when you know a Fire type is just unplayable. Alright, we got, it looks like something maybe decent here. Alright, let's see. Ooh, not a Prism Star. Interesting. Alright, well, see you guys in another match. Alright, guys, let's go do another match with the Cats and Dogs deck. See if we get more cat action this time around. We use more of our Lycanrocs there, so we'll see if we get to use Persian. Alright, what are we up against? We are up against, looks like Zoark. Alright, this is good. Zoark is a good matchup. If we can go second, we can get the Spoil the Fun knockout. And we can build up Lycanroc. If we go first, which I'm fine with too. Like, you can still hit Zoark for 90 damage too with Persian because you can use Twilight Eyes. So this is a really good matchup. So we are going to mulligan revealing that we're playing a Lycanroc deck. This might actually look more like Zoark Weavile Lycanroc, which is actually pretty good. So it kind of throws them off a little bit. I guess, I don't know. And all right, not a bad start. Uh, I think we'll start with Absol just for cannon fodder. Definitely want to play down the Sneasel. We can definitely Marshadow him. Nah, I think we just Cynthia. I don't know, we could Marshadow ourselves into a Lily though. Who knows? There's an energy, perfect. Uh, we'll Nest Ball for... Do I even want to do Nest Ball though, just in case of Danger Rogue? Yeah, I think I do. Um, I think we will indeed get the Ditto. Especially before, you know, he mocks me. I wouldn't mind getting Persian down to get maybe mill amount of energy. I don't know, it's possible. Alright, not a terrible not a terrible hand. We can do dangerous rogue next turn, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm honestly just taking a passing. I mean this is a pretty solid hand. Yeah, I think I just pass. Yeah, that's fine. We might get Marshadowed. I don't wanna put down too many Pokemon because again he has dangerous rogue. But if he can fill his bench up here, we can knock out the Rock Ruff, which is what I'm going to do. We'll see. He's going to Pokey Calm. Kind of wish I had actually had access to Kuzma. I don't know. I'd prefer a Dangerous Rogue alike in Rock, but we could maybe get a Dangerous Rogue KO on like a Tapu Lele. I don't know. Alright, he's going to DC Zorua. He's going to Lily here. Definitely want to Marsh out of him now. Or we can maybe just Persian him. Persian might actually be better. Ooh, we got a DCE. That's a big draw. I kind of want to do the Persian play. I just want to try it out and see how it goes. Like, we can go Lycanroc. Switch, knock him out. 
What if he like comments out of nowhere and counters against me? But I guess we don't have enough Pokemon plays. So yeah, it's probably better to do the Lycanroc play here actually. Just do Switch Bluff Thirsty Eyes, knock out the Zorua. I don't know. I was I'm a fan of trying out the uh, Persian play there. That would have been pretty nifty. But whatever. This works too. And he's not gonna lull and muck me this turn, so we're still gonna get access to Ditto. Hopefully we get a support off the prizes. That works too, that can get us Tapu Lele or Marshadow. It's fine though. If we didn't get to use Persian, whatever, we can always save it for a rainy day. Uh, being able to like Persian Twilight Eyes combo him could actually be really powerful. <laughs> we could like discard all the energy from his hand if he has any in his hand, and then we can also get rid of the energy in the active, and then Zork might just be completely naked. So that could be kind of cool. So we should be able to knock him out here once again. We should be able to actually get a huge prize lead on him, which is good. We can also do another, we can always just go with another Lycanroc, knock out the Rockruff. I don't know, we'll see. If he builds up Rockruff and doesn't go for Righteous Beating, I might just do that. If not, we'll just knock him out and maybe just build up another guy. He's gonna get a tap of Lele. That is another ability. So now Sneasel is doing 100 damage, or Weavile, sorry, is doing 100 damage. So see what he Lele's for. Probably gonna get a Cynthia, I'm guessing. Could get a Mallow, too, if he's playing Mallow. Yeah, he is gonna get a Mallow. All right, I called it. Another prediction. Another prediction in the book. All right, so he's gonna do Mallow. I wonder what he gets, though. Like, I guess, like, he could get, like, a Lycanroc DC. And then he can maybe knock out my Ditto or my Sneasel here with Raij's beating. But he's not dealing with the big boys. I don't really know if that's a good idea or not. It's probably better for him just to... Uh, um, oh, ooh, Twilight Eyes. Ooh, ooh I'm not the Dangerous Rogam then. Oh, he's gonna Marsh out of me. All right, you know, he gives me a new hand. That's fine. As long as I get an energy, I'm happy. Okay, we did not get an energy. We did get a Pokecom though and a Pokemon. Good, there's a nice ball. He's gonna fill his bench up. Nice. Okay, so all we need to do is get an energy here and knock him out. Got an ultra ball. So we'll do this. We will have to play a Tapu Lele down, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go for Cynthia. I could actually just do Lily. Uh, nah, I'd rather just do like Cynthia, because we can put the choice paint on the Sneasel. Get ready for that thing to turn into a, uh, a Weavile. All we need to do is get an energy here. I don't even care if we have the Dangerous Rogue. I'm like, I'm fine with getting an energy. Unless it's a unit, because I might want to go Weavile. Because if he knocks me out Lycanroc, eventually we'll be able to respond. And uh, it does have to be a unit energy, and that's fine though. So whatever, we have another Rockruff. Might as well fill up our bench. And yeah, we'll have to take the knockout with Dangerous Rogue. I'm fine with that. I would have preferred to save it for Lycanroc, but we have Weavile too, so that's fine. There's a Scape Rope, there's a Dauncey. You can kind of see why though, I'm liking more- <laughs> Guess what I did there? Why I like more than just having like six fighting energy accesses. I personally think this deck should probably play a little bit more energy. A little more, more energy, like fighting energy. So he's got four abilities. So we're doing 200 damage with Weave, with uh, Weavile. Any rid of Boozma. He's actually gonna knock him out with Energy Drive it looks like, which can do 80 on the dot. Does he even have a DC though? Ooh, he's playing Plumeria. It's obviously not a Zoark stall deck or Zoark control, but you know. He's asked to play another Lele down. Not great for him. Lele's an easy target. It's got that HP too that is in range of like Claw Slashes and Twilight Eyes with like Dynarchy Choice Man. So yeah, that's pretty good. Lysander Labs, alright, whatever. I don't really care about that. We can still even knock out Lele with Weavile. Oh, he didn't get anything. Okay, this is really good. So I think we just knock him out with Weavile here. Knock out Zoark, maybe. Yeah, this is a uh, pretty good spot if I do say so myself. Hold on, is Weavile on the deck? It's Weavile on the deck. Alright, we're gonna get rid of Meowth. Meowth and Rockruff, I think. So we can always evolve Ditto. Yeah, Weavile's in the deck. Alright, good. We can Lycanroc him too. What I'm gonna do. We're gonna Lycanroc up the uh, Zork, I think. You can always do a Lele for later. You can always do a Lele for later. I know we're doing 250, but I'm gonna bump the stadium anyways. Um, we'll 
we'll save the Mars Shadow. Just knock him out. I guess I didn't need to bump the stadium. It's fine though. I just want to put myself in a good spot. There's Rock Ruff. So the good thing is we can always evolve Ditto into another Weavile if we get Stretcher, which is in the deck, right? Yeah, we still have our Stretcher in our unit, so like we can still respond with the 200 damage pop out and no win. I think it's still good knockout Zoark. It just gets rid of all his draw support. I could have just targeted Lycan Rock. I could have targeted the Rock Ruff. That would have been a stupid idea, obviously. I think it's just better to get rid of his like, get rid of his Zoar, get rid of all the draw support he has, and just force him to have to play a supporter for the turn to draw out of this. And he can't really even knock me out either, because Zoark was the only thing that can knock out my uh, Weavile. He can knock me out with like Splintered Cell, maybe. I don't know. I think we're safe to survive the turn, though. The life in our labs. That's fine. We're still doing 200 damage with Weavile. There's a Lily. Interesting list though, playing Plumerias, playing Lysander Labs. And there is the concession from my opponent. Once again, we beat him with Lycanroc, but I'm happy we got to use the Weavile. We haven't used <clears throat> our little cats yet. So we got we to use those Persians eventually. So uh, we'll do another game with the deck, obviously. Oh, we got a pack. All right, we'll open up the pack first. Oh, hey, look, I just realized Lycanroc's on the ladder. How fitting. Didn't even realize Lycanroc's on the ladder. I, I, I forgot about that. It goes with the theme of the video. That's why we're on a win streak, because we have a Lycanroc ladder, of course. That, that's 100% that's why. All right, we'll open up a team-up pack. Last team-up pack I opened, I ended up pulling a Rainbow Rare Pika Rom. Let's follow up with another Rainbow Rare Pika Rom, please, and thank you. No. We got a Parasect, though. So I guess I can trade off a couple of these. Parasect might have some value. All right, well, I will catch you guys in another match. Alright guys, we're gonna do one last match with our deck. Hopefully we're able to get some more cat action in, but we ended up playing against two of our best matchups. So I would say this video was a pretty good success. Or at least playing the deck was a good success. Uh, but this time we are not up against any of those decks. We are up against... I don't know actually. We win the coin flip, so no Persian action. Or Meowth action, actually. And alright, not the best start. Dionysus is not great, but we do have Brookwood Hill and Nest Balls, so this makes up for our bad hand. We'll see what kind of deck we're up against. I saw a Dragon and Fairy, so yeah. No clue what we're up against. Alright, a Snorlax, that, that, that gives me no info. Uh, get Rockruff, let's be honest, Snorlax weak to fighting, pretty easy dubs. We'll Nest Ball for... Uh, we'll get the Ditto, I think. Well, Cynthia, looking for a switch or something to get Rockoff out of harm's way. There's Meowth, and there's Persians. So we got both Persians. We got a Twilight Eyes Lycanroc, so that's pretty good. We just need a switch, and this hand is looking pretty spicy. Don't know what we're up against. Snorlax doesn't get much info. It could be a Malamar deck. We'll see. I saw Dragon. What is this, Gardevoir Snorlax? Oh, no, he's gonna be playing a Blastoise deck then. All right, that's fine. Blastoise, I think I can beat. It's gonna actually be able to pay for cheer up. I think what I can do is I can still set up Snorlax with Empty Threat, even if it does like 30 or whatever damage, it'll still have enough, like it'll have 214 HP left, which is perfect for Twilight Eyes and Cell Rock. So it might be okay here. Maybe we can get Persian action. If his hand ends up, being, ends up being big, we can maybe do make him pay. Maybe get rid of all his rare candies. That could be really good, actually. She's so gonna do a cheer up. He's getting ready to build the Snorlax up. So kind of threatening. We don't have a good way to one shot it quite yet. We need a lot here to take care of it. There's a DCE, which I like to see evolve into Persian. We need a switch though ASAP. I think I will go for Twilight Eyes just to slow him down a little bit. I don't want to lose Dianti. It's one of the only ways we can hit good numbers on this thing. Well, Cynthia. No switch. Well then, that is a fatal rip in the chat. We're just going to have to pass. We got no switch there. That really does suck. You can always choice ban in it for 300 if it ever comes down to it. Not finding a switch, though, is a little unfortunate. If he's playing Waylord Carp, I actually should be careful what I bench, just in case he... And he is playing Waylord Carp. Yeah, we might walk into a Tower and Splash. And, alright, he doesn't have Blastoise, though, which is good. Might have to do Kakui here, just to find the switch. This is pretty brutal. This is pretty bad. 
Yeah, I think we gotta go Kikui. Uh, we'll evolve you into you. I think just get Revile into play. I think we have to go Kikui here. I don't really think I need it otherwise. Switch. Okay, we got DC. That works too. Bit of a tough discard, but we got there. We get the knockout too, so we get three prizes. And now all we have to do is deal with that Whaler Carp and we win the game. We still have Dangerous Rogues, so that could definitely happen. We can cap out at 250, Choice Band, Diancy would be enough to knock out Whaler Carp. So we just gotta wait for him to fill his bench up, or he can seize the match. We'll do another game, though, obviously. Alright, we're looking for some cat action, and we got the Lycanroc off the ladder, which is pretty dang fitting for the video. Each game we were able to get something off the ladder, that's pretty good. We got a new Lycanroc. Don't really need it though, I already have my full art Lycanroc. And Lycanroc won't be that good anyways once rotation hits, because it's leaving the format. I don't know if we're going to get a, uh, a Sun and Moon Shining, uh, a Sun and Moon Legendary Treasures Evolutions type of set, where we get a bunch of remakes. I doubt that it'll happen. That'd be pretty nice though if it does. So, yeah, it looks like we're against Zoark Lycanroc again. Uh, one thing I do have to consider though is Weavile. I probably should have considered that my last game, but yeah, we gotta be careful how many abilities we play, so I should be a little mindful of Weavile. We didn't get the Meow start. We do get Rockruff and Lele though. I think I have to start with Rockruff. Not a fan of doing that, but I mean, Would be nice to start with Meow. <sighs> we didn't get a do. Hopefully we can get some cat action. I don't want this video to be carried by Lycanroc, because I have some. A few more Lycanroc deck ideas in mind. I do want to try out Zygarde GX again, just because it's getting a lot of hype right now. So, we'll see. Mm, I think we'll have to play down another Rockruff here, just get ready for the Lycanroc Assault. We will Pokecom, get Ditto. Never mind, Ditto is not in the deck. Uh, we'll get Sneasel then. Just prepare for that. My opponent says hello. My choice band. Uh, we'll go for Lily here. I don't want to fill my bench up too much if he's playing Lycanroc, because again, Dangerous Rogue is kind of a problem, but we gotta do what we gotta do. And this, you know what? I think Lily for six is the better call here. Let's see what this gives us. No fightings. Um, might have to attach the bench rock up then. Just, I don't want to attach here. He might just drop a Lele Guzma on me though, which is what I'm scared of. That's why I didn't attach the active. I don't know. Maybe I should have. It's fine though. We didn't get energy, any uh, fighting. This is why I'm more of a fan of maybe playing seven fighting, like the four units, and then the three basic fighting, as opposed to just six basic fighting options, or six fighting options. This is my opinion, though. I do think a third fighting is good in here. It's gonna get a ditto down. That could be an easy Lele target. Take an easy uh, two prizes there. Ooh, he's gonna feel Blower away. He is playing Blower in his list. Good thing he, or she, sorry, I've already played that. There's that Lily. We don't have a way to marsh out of him. We don't have a way to Persian him either. I can draw an energy here. I'm really thinking just knock out the rock rough. Because this thing could be a bit of a problem for us. We did not get there though. That's unfortunate. Alright, Twilight Eyes keeps preventing energy. No only from the active. Um I guess we'll just knock out Ditto that one Lele, sure. I, I guess this is fine. Um Cool evolve. Well, I want a dangerous rogue. Him. I'm gonna do this now, just so I don't get knocked out by Lycanroc. We'll knock out Ditto, which is pretty good. We'll take a prize supporter, please. Yes, there we go. So Lily might get knocked out here by Lycanroc. We'll see though. My opponent would need a lot to get a dangerous rogue KO on this Lycanroc. And if he does, we can maybe just put some pressure on with Energy Drive for now. It's not the worst turn. We got rid of Ditto, so he might not be able to turn that into a Weavile or a Muck now. Not really that matters. I guess Muck's more important. Okay, he's gonna play Lycanroc. Will he bring something up? He might force the Sneasel in the active spot. Or she. I guess I gotta say she. No, she's gonna play Lycanroc, though. Very interesting. This is fine. Uh, she would need a Choice Band Kikui to KO me here. Or Diancy. So that's asking for a lot. So we'll see if Lycanroc is safe. If it gets knocked out, not the end of the world. We can like, we can Twilight Eyes, slow him down a little bit. Then we can like Energy Drive her, just get some damage on it, soften it up. That's my best call. It's a good thing we got Cynthia off the prizes though. There's a Lele. So yeah, she can flip her bench. So we can probably get our own 
dangerous rogue KO here if she doesn't knock out my dangerous rogue KO her. So we'll see how this goes. Lycanroc versus Lycanroc. Who will KO who? And again, she's gonna need a Kakui and a Choice Pan to finish me off. I don't even know if these lists are playing Kakui. They might be, if they're trying to look for answers to Bolcephalon. Is that gonna go? No, it's gonna project. So we should be safe. It will actually get rid of my hand. I'm not a fan of that. We have the Choice Band, and we could have probably got a Dionysi off of Cynthia. It's fine, though. Hopefully we can get a supporter here. We still have most of our supporters, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, we got supporters. Good. So, I'm pretty confident we'll be safe, unless she gets a Choice Band Dionysi and an Energy. We should be alive here, but you know what, if she gets really lucky and gets the knockout, I mean, whatever. That That's a little unbelievable, but we'll see. Still Weavile, too, and there's three abilities in place. So we can hit for 150, and she didn't even get an attack off, so straight up, if we draw an energy here, we KO her. Um, I do want to evolve, just because I don't want to draw these cards. I might as well do this, because if I do with the energy, at the very least, we can slow her down a little bit. I'm not going to play the Meowthdown. It looks like we're not going to get much Persian action in this video, whatever. So be it. It's going to take the Dangerous Rogue KO. Might be better to save it for Lucario, though, if I'm being honest with you, but, you know, it's fine. We can still, like, gust around and get rid of Zoarks. I maybe should have Ultra Ball there for a, another Rock Ruff. I just don't want to walk into a Dangerous Rogue counter gameplay. That's, like, what I'm scared of. I always got to be very mindful of that that you would not be surprised how often i get counter gained ko'd by dangerous rogue that happens a lot to me actually i'm just gonna go on limitless i need to see how many of these lists are even playing counter game never mind there isn't even any zork like on this but uh, overall i just don't want to walk into a counter game ko that does happen quite a bit to me so they're gonna go for the lucario play which is what i kind of expected we might have to just walk into can just beat down which is fine we can still build up our board state but if she plays any more abilities in play, we might just retreat and knock her out with Weavile. We can also just smack with Tapu Lele, maybe. But that might be a little more easier for her to get the knockout, so I don't know. We'll see. I think the best play here is either go Weavile or maybe just let her knock me out. Can tear just beat down? I don't know. She might get another Riolu down, then she can, like, loot base Rola, and then we're back to square one. It's a good thing we have a good prize lead, though. We can draw a, um, a Guzman here. We can knock out Zoark, which is pretty good. Doesn't look like we're gonna go Weavile, so she's gonna Aura Strike me. It's fine. We can't really reach good numbers on this thing. Whatever. We'll Nest Ball for Rockruff, I think. We'll attach. Save the Kikui. We'll play down Ditto. I don't fill my bench up for Lycanroc, but at this point, I don't really care too much right now. What is Claw Slash? We'll save the Kikui. So we'll force her to Ace Rolla or do Kinteris beat down. She only has one Zoar can play. She's already used one of her Ace Rollas. Let's see. She stood she could still like pop out of nowhere with like an Angel Rogue knockout, but I would prefer that. I'm just gonna force her to have to take that knockout with her GX attack. And then this Lucario could be taken up for later. Well we do have 80 HP. I mean if she gets a choice band Kikui, she can knock me out, right? 60, 80. So if I guess she gets choice band Kikui, she can knock me out with just an aura strike without even needing to loop it. But Still force her to have to do some interesting plays. So you might not even have an answer here. Ooh, a Lily. So she did get a supporter off that. This could give her what she needs, but that's not an ace roller though, so this Lucario is open to be KO'd here, which is good. I'll just knock it out with Life Knock GX. Yeah, it looks like we're forcing her to go Kinter just beat down. Well, she might bloodthirsty guys. Nope, nope. Just gonna Force her to use Jex attack for 330 damage when we already were low on HP. So this is like the best case scenario for us. There's her GX attack gone too. So now Dangerous Rogue is out of the out of the picture, which is also really good. I think we just take the knockout here. Just knock out the Lucario, and then all we gotta do is finish up with Zoark to win the game. And there is the concede. All right, well, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here after we open up the Celestial Storm pack. Uh, it would have been nice to get some action in with the Persians. I mean, we didn't. We we didn't really find any uses for them. Lycanroc kind of just carried us. I mean, we were playing against a lot of decks that, like, Lycanroc was really good against. So, Lycanroc kind of carried the video. I know we didn't get any uh, cat action in, but you kind of get the idea of the deck. I already did a video on this deck, like, a month ago. So, if you guys want to go see some Persian action there, you guys can go watch that video, too, I guess. Like, whatever. Ooh, Reversal Mudkip. 
And we got a Waylord. I've actually been kind of looking at this Waylord recently. I don't think it's good, but I think it'll be kind of cute with Quagsire. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have today's PVCGO video here um, with the Denver Lycanroc Persian deck. Unfortunately, we didn't get to use any cat action. Most of the time we were going first anyways, and we ended up playing against matchups where like Lycanroc just kind of runs over your opponent. So I guess that's just fate for us. Every matchup we played against, our opponent had one Pokemon in play that was weak to fighting. So that should answer the video. We got to use Weavile though. I do like this deck though. I think it is very cute. If I were to change it, I would 100% try to get another basic fighting in the deck. Uh, getting turns where you don't get energy on Rockruff can be very important. If I were to take anything out, um, maybe the Marshadow? I don't know, I didn't use it. I'd either take out the Marshadow or, actually, I don't know. It's, it's actually close. I kind of want to keep everything in the deck. I guess maybe Marshadow can go I don't know. Um, I do think this Persian's really good against Stall, but I that around that these two video, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to let me know. Don't get too subscribed on the road to 5,000 subscribers. We just recently hit uh, 4,200, so I gotta thank guys for that. I don't that these PGO video, guys. Cats and dogs. Really cool archetype. Even going into Unbroken Bonds, this deck could still be fun. Um, and I might just revisit Persian later on, and holy cow, that was a loud fire truck horn. I don't know if you heard that or not. But anyways, I'll see you guys in another video. Make sure you go to Car Camera TCG when you buy something there. Use discount code CODELDF. Get a 5% discount on your order. I'll see you guys in another PCGO video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.